Hi guys, it's Claire. Welcome back. So I am very recently returned from a trip out to New York City where two of my best friends got married this weekend and it was super fun, but I'm also still recovering. So I thought I would get back into things with a sort of nice gentle tag video. So today I'm going to be doing the My Pleasure book tag and I was kindly tagged by Kendra over at Kendra Winchester and also by Robert at Barter Hordes. So I'm going to link both of their channels down below along with the original tag and otherwise let's get into it. Question one is Think, a book that makes you think hard. And there are lots of books out there that make me think hard but the one that really came to mind when I was thinking about this question was The Fall of Language in the Age of English by by Minae Mizumura, which I read back in January. And this book really looks at the rise of English as the dominant global language and the consequences that that has for local and national languages and, in turn, local and national literature. And Mizumura looks specifically at the Japanese language because that is her own native tongue, and she offers some really fascinating insights into the development of the Japanese language and the sort of current state of Japanese literature. And even beyond that, it really makes you think critically about translation and reading books in translation and the powers and privileges of the English language in this day and age. Question two is Love, a book that broke or mended your heart. And this is very timely because I recently made a video all about sad love stories, which is one of my favorite made-up genres of book. So I listed a lot of books in that video that are some of my favorite sad love stories, but I think the one that's kind of the most appropriate for this question would be Moonlight Shadow, which is a short story slash novella by Banana Yoshimoto, often included in editions of Kitchen. And this is all about young love and experiencing significant loss and grief for the first time. And it's also about learning how to heal and move on from that loss. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, but this is just an exquisite, beautifully told, contained story and it both broke and mended my heart. Question three is Eat, a book that nourishes you. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to be a book that has anything to do with food, but I couldn't really think of one that falls into that category. So I'm going to go with a book that nourishes my soul. And those books are often ones that kind of remind me of home. And so I'm going to go with The Granite Pale, which is a poetry collection by Lorene Niedecker, who was a little known objective Objectivist poet who actually is from my hometown and she writes a lot about the landscape and the flora and the fauna of that area in her poems which are very stripped down and spare and although I've known about her for a really long time it wasn't until last year that I read one of her full poetry collections and when I read The Granite Pale just the way that she describes the landscape and the river and the fresh water and kind of the feel of that part of Wisconsin felt very familiar and moving to me and it really reminded me of home. So it's a very nourishing, comforting book in that sense. Question four is Laugh, a book that brought a little comic relief. And for this, I'm gonna steal Kendra Winchester's answer and say anything by Samantha Irby, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite humor writers slash essayists. And I read her essay collection, We Are Never Meeting in Real Life last summer. And I just yesterday finished reading her other collection, Meaty. And both of these are hilarious, and real books that are both insanely funny but also delve into some of life's real shit, whether it be chronic illness or dating woes or constantly being broke, but she does it with such a humorous touch that keeps things funny and also very relatable. Question five is sex, a book that explores or contains sexuality but doesn't make you cringe. So whenever I think of an author who writes about sex really well, Elena Ferrante is always the first person that comes to mind. But the reason she comes to mind is that she does write about the cringiness and the awkwardness and the sometimes ambivalence that can be tied up in sexuality and particularly in female sexuality. And in books like The Days of Abandonment or Trouble 
troubling love, the way that she writes about sexuality is so real and so honest, but not in a way that is particularly enjoyable. Other than that, I'm trying to think of books that feature sort of non-cringy sex scenes, and the one that's coming to mind is Prodigal Summer by Barbara Kingsolver, which is a book I read a few years ago but never actually finished. But if I'm remembering correctly, there were some rather steamy encounters between a wildlife woman and this hunter guy she meets in the woods. I seem to remember them like boning inside a hollowed out tree trunk, but I'm not sure if I'm remembering that correctly. So if you've read that book, let me know in the comments below if I am like on track at all. But yeah, I feel like that I remember that as being like non-cringy, but I can't say for sure. Question six is Rest, a book that gave you peace, reflection, or just calmed you down. So I'm gonna go with two books for this one, and they're both pretty different. And the first one I'm gonna go with is Middlemarch by George Eliot, which at its core is a book about regular people trying to live good lives. And while reading this book, I was really comforted and moved by the idea that the lives of ordinary, forgiveness, gotten people are still meaningful and still important and I just thought that was really beautiful. And the other book I read recently that I found very calming and meditative was The White Book by Hong Kong which I've talked about in a couple of recent videos but this is a book that's kind of reflections on life, death, the passage of time, and the inevitability of things falling away. And it was just such a wonderful, stunning book that kind of burrows its way into your heart and wraps its arms around you. So I really look forward to revisiting this book many times in the years to come. And number seven is Experience, a book that introduced you to a new subject or shifted your perspective. And again, there are so many books that could fit this category, but I would say that one book that proved really monumental in kind of shaping my current worldview and understanding of inequality in America was The Origins of the Urban Crisis, Race and Inequality in Post-War Detroit by Thomas Segru. And I read this in college for a class on the American city, and it really just helped introduce me to the idea of structural inequality through its discussions of housing and job discrimination in post-war Detroit. And it was a really important read for me personally in terms of making me a more aware and conscientious and thoughtful citizen with a better understanding of the ways in which oppression and inequality operate in our society. So it's certainly not the only book out there that touches on those subjects and the idea of structural inequality, but for me it was really a watershed read. So those are all the questions. I would like to tag Jasmine from Jasmine's Reads, Doris from All Deep Books, Alex from What Page Are You On, and Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures. I would love to see all of your answers, and I would love to see anyone's answers to this tag, so feel free to do it. And if you've read any of the books that I mentioned here, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!